Uh, we'll start the meeting this morning of the Pinole Hercules Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion. And uh, according to this 1984 record, none of these people are here today. I'm glad you were. <laughs> well, I would have been. If they were two years, I would have been. <laughs> I was actually living in Pinole at the time. Really? 84, that's when I got married. Yeah. yeah. So when did we actually kick you out of Pinole? <laughs> okay. I moved to a better place. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, Pledge of Allegiance, uh, could you all stand please? I didn't read the agenda. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Looks like we do. Roll call. Uh, we'll start with uh, Hector and uh, who's down at the. Why, why can't I see down Ron. there? Oh, Ron. Okay. Ron. <laughs> can't see you past Mike. Mike Roberts is here. Tamara Miller. Andrew Murray. David Biggs. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. And another Murray. Swearingen. And your name again? I'm, I'm him. Okay. Yeah, I liked him. I always liked that guy. Okay. Roll call introductions. Um, citizens to be heard. Are there any citizens to be heard today? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to new connections. And that is a verbal from Pinole and a verbal from Hercules. So I guess we'll start with... Uh, pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. You know... I'm helping you, so you help me. So that's good. You know, we're working together here. Just don't hold hands. Beautiful. <laughs> Operator's report. I'm sorry, Ron. Oh, Didn't no mean problem. to skip over you there. I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, good morning. I'm not uh, quite awake yet. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while uh, since we've given an operator report. Um, but uh, going back from July through October, all the numbers there are going to mirror what, what are shown here for November and December. So I just included those for... Yeah, to keep it short here. Um, as you can see, the flows, we haven't received much rain, so so the plant's really receiving pretty much close to dry weather flows at this time. Um, and if you turn over to the performance process performance indicators, you can see the plant's still operating at a very, very high level, uh, good removal efficiency. We're still removing 98% uh, of the contaminants from the water and uh, easily meeting our our NPDES permit requirements, and uh, that will conclude my report for today. Okay. Uh, just one quick question. That's because I'm a little bit naive. We don't use the outfall because we don't need it. Is that correct right now? The yeah, the shallow water outfall is only for uh, extremely high flows. Understood. Yeah. Uh, point is, is do we check that outfall to make sure that it's clear at the other end from time to time because you it flows directly into the bay, does it not? Yes, correct. And actually, during this, the last expansion pro project, we actually uh, put on a, a duck bill onto the end of the pipe to uh, prevent debris from so, clogging it up and stuff. So There you go. That was yeah. my question. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on to new connections, and we'll start with Pinole. Uh, Ms. Miller, if you would. I'm uh, sorry. In, I'm going to go first here, if you don't Oh, mind. you're going to go first. Yes, All right. thank you. Okay. So uh, in Hercules, um, for this fiscal year, we've had 18 <coughs> new connections associated with our Muir Point residential subdivision project. Thank you. Okay. Tamara? Um, good morning. Um, I did ask Mike to go first because I'm waiting for staff to text me the numbers for Pinole. Um, I apologize. I did not have time to look those up before coming to today's meeting. Okay, unknown. Then we'll move off of item six to item seven, capital projects. Mr. Uh, Chair? Yes. Can I make a comment, please? Yes. Before we go on any further, <clears throat> I, I would ask that we uh, delay this meeting for another week. Um, I watched your, the Pinole Council meeting on Tuesday night, and the subject of the... Um, the new contract, financial state contract between the two cities came up. The contingency moved up. 
City of Hercules has not spoken about that. Council's not even <coughs> aware of it. And I, I would ask that we uh, delay this so that City of Hercules can have their meeting on Tuesday, possibly find out more about what's occurring. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm glad that you pulled that item. It was on consent calendar. It should have been a public announcement item, but I, I want to thank you for doing that because I was able to find out a lot of more information, but uh, City of Hercules has not been able to have a discussion about this. We have no idea what's going on. I went and pulled last September's uh, report from Carrillo, and there are $470,000 of change orders still outstanding. So I know the discussion came up and it was very sensitive, but there are possible change orders that we can talk about. And unfortunately, I'm an elected official as the others are, and we live in an open government, okay? Staff might not be held responsible, but the council members, the electeds, always get held responsible for not being open. I would ask that we add this on for the next meeting and not wait three months and allow the city of Hercules the chance to have a discussion to understand what's going on. Um, I know that Councilman Murray had asked, you had asked, you were told by staff that city of Hercules knew about this, that we had already, as a council, been discussed, and we have not. And so it is hard for me to ask that, but I'm not really open to finding out about a plaque and what kind of cake we're gonna have when we have other issues that are a little bit more important with the wastewater. Okay, uh, first off, I, I will go through the rest, the, the remaining portion of the agenda because it's agendized and there is a request to, for a special meeting, special committee meeting, and I'll put that uh, on the floor prior to adjournment as is allowed by parliamentary procedure because it's a request, request for a um, uh, it's actually a, a point of order and a change of um, venue no. no sir it was just a simple request to delay the rest of this no, understood meeting. but you asked for another meeting next week Absolutely, and it wouldn't be the change of venue, it'd just be another meeting so we can address. Well, it's a change of venue to the agenda okay. because that's not part of the agenda. All right, So, and, and also the reason why I brought this up because the loan status has to do with the contingency fee. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that was one reason. I mean, you know, uh, we're gonna okay. get a loan status on right. this. Uh, we're gonna find out what, what's Let's, coming in, but we also, we don't have anything in writing that tells us where we're at with the money. Uh, there's no document that was laid out on this. So okay, I'm, I'm going to ask for staff to comment on this, but not prior to going through item seven. And I'd like to go through item seven because staff's prepared to do this at this time. And I wanna complete that and not bring that up at a later point. And then I will bring back your request if that's okay? I might not be here. I don't see any point staying here. I don't want to be part of Dan, be part of it, please. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm asking but, you. Uh, we are, it is hard as council member to sit here and see staff dictating to the council members and we're held to a higher no. standard. It is, it is uh, tough for me to do that. And um, where, do we, where do we call foul? I'm perfectly willing to deal with that comment. Uh, and also to uh, ask for a future meeting agenda or a future meeting of a, a special meeting of the committee. I'm willing to ask for that, but I'd like to go through this agenda. I want to put it behind me. I don't want to have to deal with it at a later point. And uh, we don't have to do anything with those items, and you can vote no on all those items if you, if you would like to, but I, you should be here to vote. You owe that to your Mr. committee. Chair. I don't see where there's any anything on here other than receiving a verbal uh, update. There is nothing for us to vote on because it's okay. not agendized. Then, it's just it's just comments. Then let's, so, let's finish let's, the discussion. I'll, I'll go, you know what? Um, let's finish the discussion. Respect, you we'll, we'll go ahead and, and uh, go ahead you. with item seven. Thank you. Okay, let's go on to um, WPCP upgrade loan status. Uh, Andrea, please. 
Oh, Andre is right here. Good morning. Um, the Penal Hercules um, water pollution finance loan status update. So far through, sep um, sorry, through February 29th, um, our total disbursements from uh, the loan is $48,124,324. That's a $24 million, uh, per agency. Um, the total re reimbursements received from the state revolving loan is $47,616,664. That's uh, $23,808,332 per agency. Um, each agency's respective escrow account balances with Wells Fargo as of uh, February 29th is uh, 2,503,164.49 and 2,503,828.71. That's for Penol and Hercules respectively. Um, as a point of reminder, I've mentioned it before in other um, subcommittee meetings, but the, the difference of a few hundred dollars is that each agency had deposited their loan reimbursement checks at different times, so the accrued interest. And um, disbursement number nine, I'm sorry, disbursement number 19 in the amount of 1,328,922 per agency was submitted in early December. And that concludes my verbal update, if there are any questions. Um, the only question I have is what's the total uh, loan uh, for Pinole and the total loan for Hercules that is uh, for this whole project? Each agency, I'm sorry. Not what we paid, but the... The total amount each agency total had taken amount. out, it was just over $26 million, and I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I can certainly get that in. Yeah. Could you get that, that and, sure. and email it out to the both consuls and staffs? Will do. Mr. Chair, can we um, also... Excuse me. Can we also um, have a... Uh, Report. Uh, a copy of that report, your report today, just sure. so that we have it for <clears throat> when we report. Yeah, we don't have it in front meeting. of us. So. Okay, I can certainly prepare um, a written report. It was agendized as verbal, but I can prepare a written. Thank you. Yes. That'd be nice. Okay. Any other questions of uh, the treasurer, the finance director? I'm sorry, not treasurer, finance director. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, th and thank you, Andrea. Thank you. We'll move on to <clears throat> proposed plaque layout. Mike Roberts. One second, please. Chair, in uh, light of the prior discussion, this will be extremely short. The proposed plaque uh, is included in your packet. Um, Staff at this point would recommend following a similar format. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. <clears throat> I think we should recognize um, past council members that have uh, served on this committee during this, this uh, uh, plant reconstruction. Um, I, I don't know about, I mean, it's, it's up to the other members, but uh, in Hercules, when we had uh, the Bayfront Bridge, mm -hmm. we had a couple of council members that had served up to the point, but they uh, they elected not to get reelected. So there, there's been uh, several or two or three uh, other council members that have served on on the wastewater. And how do we recognize them? Uh, Debbie Long from Panole, long time. Understood. Uh, do we have a? When we put the plaque in at the senior center, we recognized two city consuls entirely mm -hmm. for the work between the time we started on the senior center and the time we completed the project. So that's that's a reasonable uh, request. However, it's going to make that plaque just a little bit large. Um, or the writing smaller. Yeah, but I want my name in <laughs> big letters. So No, I understand. Mike, is that a possibility that we could go back and, and pick up the people? Because we started on this project probably in about 2012 or 2010, maybe even. And at the time, our uh, engineer and uh, planning director was Dean Allison, who was a very, very important part of this whole project. And in bringing it to fruition, 
uh, we did a lot of, he did a lot, a lot of groundwork. And uh, some of you were here then, but some of you weren't. But uh, the original thought from Hercules was to go to Richmond directly and uh, not use Pinole. And it took us a long time before we finally got a consul over there that understood <laughs> what the situation was and, and to get a city manager, of course, that uh, understood what was going on and we were able to bring this thing to fruition. That was a lot of work on Mr. Allison's part. Um, he fought and fought and fought and couldn't get meetings and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'm going into a long that I don't need to do, but his name should definitely be on this. And uh, he should be really be recognized for all the work he did to uh, bring this plant to the point where we actually got to construction because we, no, we were nowhere near it. So is that a possibility that we could? Yes, put? thank you, Chair. It'd be my pleasure. I'd be happy to bring back some potential layouts at the next meeting. Okay. Um, and I'd like to go back to the actual date that we actually started on this project, which was probably about 2010. Well, um, I think you're at, yes. Well, I think you were, we were actually discussing, but uh, 2010, 2012 would be okay. Well, I think, two, all right, I'll, I can go with 2012. We were, only, we were right. in discussions up to 2012 right. before Hercules would finally get on board with, with doing a joint project. And I agree that, uh, yeah, that, that bring Hector, up, do you remember when we actually started on this? You, I don't know if you were here then. 2008. Yeah, you were here. <laughs> <clears throat> when we formally, as, as, Two cities were together. In 2000, um, <clears throat> 2010, the CEQA document was done. Um, okay. And so when I got here in 2012, uh, both cities had agreed to move forward with the expansion. Okay. So I'd say 2012, then, is when we agreed to it. So is that... Um, acceptable I'd by okay the rest of the members? I'd be okay. Okay. So let's let's start with personnel on board in 2012. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, so do you want to uh, leave it with just the council members and, and then include uh, Mr. Allison as a city engineer? And I think so. Okay. I mean, because if we start adding all city managers um, on the Hercules side, it might be rather long. <laughs> so... Uh, and just trying to keep <laughs> keep the plaque at a reasonable. Well, actually, size. the old side it would be pretty long too. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be. It's only three, but um, yeah. Uh, so, if I may clarify, that makes sense, um, the direction here, beginning 2012, with council members, uh, and then current council members and staff, with also uh, Mr. Dean Allison. And that would be council members that served on the wastewater. That, that are no longer here. And I don't know who they were. Well, we'll call the council members. Yeah, I don't know who the staff was. No, no, yeah, no, with the council members, any additional council members that may have served that are no longer Yeah, from 2012 here. forward, council members. And we can give you a list of our council members. 2000, so I'm clear, 2012 forward, wastewater subcommittee, and then current council members. Not past council members? Or past council members that served on this committee? Correct. Okay, we're getting into a little gray area there because maybe there might be some council members that did not serve on this committee who felt they were part of it that were on a regular council. What do you think about that? Well, I think maybe we should look at the list and then see okay. how big the plaque's going to be, and then maybe we okay. can... We can adjust it. We're not, we're not in a big rush to have a plaque ready, I don't think, are we? No, and I think that, that understood on this end, certainly sufficient direction. I think I know what the options are, so I can mock up some plaques and bring them back. All right. That's okay with everyone? We'll bring it back, and then we'll have some real names. Um, okay. Most of those people... Some of those people are still alive. <laughs> Let's see. Anyway, uh, moving on then from the plaque to a future ribbon cutting event. Uh, Ms. Miller, if you would. Um, thank you very much. Um, I can now report out that uh, Pinole connected five single family homes um, to the wastewater treatment plant. So that information is available. Um, the uh, item 
7C is uh, an exploration of a future ribber, ribbon cutting event and uh, we really just wanted to ask what the pleasure of the wastewater subcommittee is regarding such an event. I'll open that up for discussion. Dan? You want to have one eventually, right? Well, um, yes, I, I guess. I, so, uh, the ribbon cutting, um, uh, of course it's based on the plaque. So the plaque's probably going to take 45 to 60 days to to get okay. So because it's, it's made out of metal. So I think once we have the plaque, then we can start having a little better timeline. So uh, what are you looking at, June, July? Uh, probably June. I think we can do it by June. What do you think? Is that good enough, Mike? Mm. Um, I'll... Uh, check but I believe that would probably be sufficient time that would be three months mm -hmm. so I think that would be achievable yes and then I would also ask that maybe we have it on a Friday um, hopefully we can have Congressman Thompson he tends to come in uh, on we would the come in for that he he is particularly soft on our uh, treatment plan he's been out there as you know a couple mm -hmm. of times mm -hmm. And the uh, first time I met him, I said, well, you know, so take you on the chair of committee. He said, I'd like to see your treatment plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but apparently he's very interested in treatment plans. So. He, he, he could have the first glass of water out of the plant. Huh? Yes. Uh, so uh, Congressman has actually, uh, as, as a prior council person, he's been very active with uh, wastewater. So he, He's knowledgeable, so oh, yeah. uh, but I'm very knowledgeable. It, what, whatever we do, um, I think it would be important to have him here, yeah. and then some. Well, he'll be there. invited. We also invite our supervisors too, if, if you don't mind. And, and assembly, <laughs> yes. So I mean, so I think a Friday might be a better date for them. The only problem is in June with the um, state legislators, you're you're dealing with the budget time and and. Uh, what, what do you think about putting their names on the plaque too? Yeah, yeah. You Who, want to put the oh Nancy Skinner? Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, you know, it's your guy's city, so if you want to do that. We don't. You could put it on the Pinole site. <laughs> we'll ask for contributions. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Ask for a contribution, see what happens. It's a little late now, huh? Okay, so we'll hold that off on a date, I think, for the ribbon cutting at this point, because uh, until it's actually final, final. I don't know if I want to schedule a date because we may not be final, final. You know, I've seen these things, claims in particular, could last up to a year to two years. So I hate to put a damper on that, but um, those things do happen, and we're having a ribbon-cutting ceremony on a project that's got claims outstanding on it. I'm not sure that's the way we want to go. Just my, my thought. I think it's actively running. And we should be good with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, that, it's running. Yeah, I'm okay. There, there's no more construction there, there, so. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, fine. Then, yeah. We, then we'll schedule the date. Let's schedule a date, and we'll, we'll assume compl the, the completion is then. Uh, anybody have a date in mind? You want to go with the plaque time? All right. Same time we have the plaque, sometime in June. Yeah, that, I mean, that I'll report makes out sense. on the next um, wastewater subcommittee meeting in terms of the timing of the plaque. Okay. And there's not an overall um, concern about state legislatures, legislators attending. So if they can't attend, they can't attend. Uh, that's not critical. But on a Friday, yeah. I know that our supervisors don't meet on Fridays, so they could be there. May I just ask? Uh, yeah. Uh, is there any consideration to doing it on a Saturday when more of the general public can come? As I think we'd also thought maybe you know, tours of the facility or something might be. So I don't know if that's, uh, I just wanted to throw that out because, you know, again, our rate payers have basically paid for the expansion. And mm -hmm. surprisingly, a lot of people are interested in how wastewater plants work, right? But, you know, if we did it on a Saturday, we did our ribbon cutting like on the Bayfront Bridge and things, you know, on a Saturday. On a Saturday so, because the public was also invited. So I, I don't know if, the, if, if that was any consideration to scheduling it. Everybody go okay yeah, on Saturday? It's a good idea. And then we don't also, you know, usually the legislators are in town. They're not in session on the weekends, but, you know, that might kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, that's true. We might be able to get Mike Thompson on a Saturday where we wouldn't get him on a Friday. Mm -hmm. 
and then the public can see where their contributions are all going. Mm -hmm. Is there a preliminary date maybe we could agree to, and then that way we can contact the congressman's office and uh, and uh, and see if get a report back if if that's a a good day for me to present. Sure. Yeah. And what time are we pr uh, planning to do this on a Saturday? Seven a.m. Seven a.m. Seven a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Saturday in July, the hottest day in the afternoon would be. Uh, you want to go to the July? Best. <laughs> no. You want um, July fourth. I'm, I'm 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 only kidding too. Um, so uh, to recap, we are looking at a Saturday in possibly June. Hopefully, when the plaque is here, and optimistically when all claims have been settled, but not the controlling item. Um, the style of the. Ribbon cutting would be, you know, ta-da, here's the plaque, and then a tour. So we'd have a structured ribbon cutting as well as a, um, and depending on the amount of people coming, we'd probably have to segment the tours into smaller groups for safety reasons. I remember the Park District did a real nice program for all the people when they opened the flyover, and uh, they had food and everything. I don't know if we could accomplish that, but... I'm looking at the 13th of June, which is the second Saturday in June. <laughs> How does that fit in with it? Oh, it is 2020. Oh, my gosh. We, I didn't know we had those. We got calendars here and everything. Look at this. Wow. Yeah, the other side is 2019, though. Okay. Oh, God. F food is a little awkward at the wastewater <coughs> treatment plant, only because we'd have to have, uh, like, an open hand-washing station That's to make right sure <laughs> everybody <laughs> had clean hands. Um, so although food is a nice thought, I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm, th I, I'm thinking morning, morning though, to do it. Sure. The 13th or the 27th would be good for me. Uh, uh, the 20th is Father's Day's weekend. And Father's Day. hmm. <clears throat> Your point being? Uh, I'm out of town on the Oh, okay. Okay. Well, the 13th, let's use that as a target date at this point. Um, thank you. We'll, uh, f we'll frame up more about the event and bring it back at the next wastewater subcommittee meeting. Okay. And so that takes care of uh, that and the project recognition. Um, thank you. Um, I wanted to share with the Wastewater Subcommittee that we nominated this project for a Northern California American Public Works Association Recognition Award. Um, we applied in the category for environmental projects from $25 million to Oh, is it 50 million and above, or 25 million to 75 million? Anyway, in the very large category of environmental projects, um, and we were uh, the recipient of that award, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I do have a glass uh, object in my office, and I forgot to grab it in my haste to come in, um, but I will acknowledge that one has been ordered for Hercules, so Hercules will have one as well when they make the second round of plaques. Okay. Or trophies. Well, congratulations. Mike, you were part of that also. So congratulations to you and obviously uh, Ron, because Ron was out at the <laughs> plant and doing a lot of work out there. So congratulations on that. Okay. Um, the next item would be a question on possibly a special meeting to discuss change orders and to discuss the current progress since our consultant can't be here today and that's enough reason to ask for a report from our consultant uh, in a short period of time because from what I understand Tuesday night we're under a time frame to try to get everything settled out there and uh, that's why we had to vote on the uh, addition of 3% to the contingency fee on Tuesday evening. That now being the case, and Hercules has not voted on that yet, that would give them an opportunity to, to look at that. Next Thursday, we could have a special meeting, if it's okay with the um, uh, com subcommittee, a subcommittee meeting, and have Mike here to discuss that. Um, may I please recommend that we consider the first 
Thursday of April um, for a, a rescheduled meeting. There's um, still some legwork to do that Mike would like to work on after action's been taken to increase the contingency, and that inf that that work would be um, important to share out. Okay, and that's fine with me as long as we are having that meeting uh, to discuss that, and Carilla will be here for that meeting. Um, I will have to check Mike's schedule. Okay, but we need to have a meeting, and we need to have a chance to discuss these things because they have not been discussed. I looked back through our closed sessions. I don't recall us Mike ever coming to a closed session to discuss it. Um, Mike was in our in the city of Pinole's closed session as well. When? At, when was that? In January. Okay. As well, Mike has shared the rolling scroll of change orders with aggregated I, numbers. He's um, discussed them here with keep, us too. To I keep think. everybody aware, yes. But we need an updated, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can't put a completion notice out till your change orders. You can put it out, but you can. Your final completion can't be completed and all liens settled until your change orders are completed. Yes, that is true. So, obviously, the faster we get to it, the faster we get final completion. So, if you want to extend it out to April, there won't be a final completion until we get a chance to talk about that. Um, we've already targeted April. Um 21st or April 7th as a possible date for filing a notice of completion at the council because that would be an action of the Pinole City Council. So, and that schedule fits into the two dates that we've had for each of the independent councils to uh, increase the contingency. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our timeline. Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I guess <clears throat> my concern is, is uh, the March 6th Wastewater Committee, uh, we had a change order with 82 potential changes, 841,000. The September change order uh, uh, went from the, the September 5th Wastewater Meeting, now showed 84 change orders with uh, 1.773 uh, million, and then we added another four change orders to bring that up to 1.844 million. So uh, this list is growing, and I understand there's a concern that you know we want to be quiet about, but that is one. There, the Wastewater Committee, along with the residents of Panola and Hercules, want to know what's going on with some of these change orders, okay? That has been, uh, since the beginning of these meetings, that has always been a concern of this committee. Panol, very strong on this throughout the last six years or eight years about change orders. Now, as we get to the end, it seems like change orders is just smoke in the air. It just went away, and it's still here. So, yeah, we want to sort of find out how many of those 88 change orders have been completed. Uh, we don't need a detail, but somewhere along the line, this should be made present so it's a public document so that all residents get to understand what's going on with this. And, and I, so that, that is my concern. That's why I'm bringing this up, because all of a sudden, here at the end, change orders disappeared. We don't even want to talk about them. And that is hard for me as an elected official to proceed like that. Um, may I offer a, a segmented approach? I mean, I, I understand the concern that change order information is important and we uh, do want to be transparent. Um, we want to be able to work on resolving uh, some of the claims and potential claims. Um, we do have two claims, official claims filed, um, and we have what looks like two or three potential claims that would be pending upon the settlement of change orders. Um, I think it may serve this committee well to break that into two parts, bring a list of change orders that will be approvable, the smaller ones, the nuts and bolts, the things that we've been working on, and then leave the other issue for a second meeting um, sometime later. Um, but I was kind of hoping to do it in one. That's why I suggested the um, April meeting. But we could break it down and have a meeting mid-March, mid to late March, and then one in April. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair? 
So, uh, Ms. Miller, um, yeah, you see, but if I hadn't brought this up, when were we going to talk about this? Because you guys, what you just said earlier was that uh, everything should be cleared up by the first week in April. And supposedly the two cities, or specifically the Pinole, was going to do the completion of findings. And so when was this committee going to get a chance to even touch that if, if I hadn't brought this up. So th Dan, thank you for- that's understood. And, and so, but that has been the heart and soul of this committee is the two cities working together, the council members working together, and, and, and here at the end, I just don't wanna segment that out, okay? So uh, yes, I would be open to another meeting in March and uh, one prior. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to get to is, um, this one meeting that you're talking about. Um, you, well, she's we, asked for a, a, two a meeting in March to discuss. Segmenting part of this. Segmenting this. And then and when then, do we meet again to find out? And that would be the April, early April meeting. Mr. Chair, if I could just step in for a second, and, and I understand the frustration that's occurring, but I've understood that the goal is to, well, yes, we have some information on the pending change orders. One, there are numbers that uh, change orders that uh, are ready to be approved that, but can't be paid until we increase the contingency. So the contractor is waiting for that. But I had understood the direction was to come up with a global settlement here at the end. And so change orders do play into that global settlement of claims and claims in the change orders and claims in the context of global settlement is what both councils are looking at in closed session. You don't have an ability to, to have a closed session as this body, and there are certain elements of that that you can't really discuss in open session in front of this group. That's hence why we're updating our council next week in closed session on the status of, and Mike Warner will be at that meeting for us, on the status of the claims, but again, we as staff have always understood at this point it's best to try to come up with a global settlement that there is an interplay between change orders and claims and hence why you know we haven't provided that updated report certainly the information is there but you know the uh, i think bifurcating it may work but also the, the whole idea is to try to solve it globally the two do relate i mean so uh, so that becomes a little bit of a conundrum is depending on what the claims discussion is you may not be able to have that here in a second meeting because it's not it may not be appropriate at that time for an open session discussion well I exactly and if, if <clears throat> claims specifically will go to a closed session we can't discuss those here and we can't discuss them at a regular council meeting i understand that i get that uh, change orders are variable in what might be um, agreed to, and if they're not agreed to yet, I also see the point of not having the change orders uh, public because they haven't been agreed to one way or another, and it might give the wrong, send the wrong message to the public saying, well, you got a $10,000 change, how can you give them $10,000 for that? Well, it's still in discussion, and maybe we're only gonna give them 2,000. So to, dis to put those out to the public, that leads to a lot of concern about, well, gosh, so look at all this money. And maybe we are spending all that money. Well, so Mr. I think Chair, maybe we ought to. But what we have been successful in doing in this committee is trying to figure out whether the chain orders, change orders were due to design or architect. Uh, or it, So that's what we've been able to root out in this committee at times. Okay, so And we can still uh, do that. But that's not occurring right now. So... And I understand about the, you know, the possibility of potential claim, but again, City of Hercules has not had not had the opportunity, and understood. And so when You're I'm watching your meeting Tuesday night and to I, and, increase and the watching your meeting and your staff is reflecting back to your council, City of Hercules has already heard this. It's sort of uh, tough to hear, and so I just want the opportunity to know what's going on and find out what the global solution is because the global solution in the city of Hercules has been like a, uh, a, a ball that's bouncing. And so as a council, we just want to understand what's happening just as the Pinole Council has had it and that you've had more closed sessions about this, okay. which is understood. <clears throat> but somewhere I think, along I think that number one is you can get your information from, from your people that are involved in the project and I'm 
I'll let you folks handle that end. Okay, what I want to handle here today is what this committee does as far as uh, having an, a future meeting, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm open to have another meeting in March. And again, I think you made a good point is that how much more information will we have than we already have? Can I interject just a little bit about this? Um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, and if you watch the meeting, you know that I, I particularly asked you know, if, if Hercules was on board and, and they had all the information and um, led to believe that that was the case. Um, so I remain quiet. But the the I, the thought process for me is, is just this, is that when it, and you, and you made it a good point, it's gone silent, um, and it's, but we have to be kind of, in my mind, kept abreast, just for the particular reasons that, that Dan's, <clears throat> alluding to, and, and, and that is is that uh, uh, we're responsible. We need to make sure that uh, uh, these change orders, the dynamic of the change orders, you know, are new change orders coming in all the time, um, or is there anything new that's coming in that, that we're not aware of uh, that's becoming part of the, the discussions? Uh, you know, uh, Prior, we've been kept abreast of all the change orders, and and um, you know now that it's become a uh, a negotiation, um, it's uh, understanding that part of it where the negotiations are, are are going to, or if you know if there's, it's like, I guess it's the control side of it. You know, I don't understand um, how it's transpiring, and so therefore. You feel like you don't have control of the the situation, the lack of information, and I think that's that's the case. Um, but <clears throat> more so, I, I think that as we've been traveling down this path, I think we've all been cognizant of you know that there's two entities here, and and maybe sometimes our interests are, aren't always aligned. But it seemed that we got to that point, and we've traveled that path to the end of this this process here, and then. All of a sudden, um, uh, the example being my question is, do, does Hercules know about all of this, uh, the matters here? And so that we're not getting ahead, but we're not uh, of them and, and in the process, and, uh, and, and they understand. And I think that's the issue for me, <clears throat> because we you know, built such a good relationship, I think, in, in relationship to this plant and getting it done, that we're not, um, you know, uh, jeopardizing that, if you will. And so, um, uh, again, I, I, I'm the same way. I want to know what we're discussing and what we're negotiating, you know, and, and uh, I understand the, the, the philosophy of once two people know about something, it's no longer a secret. But, you know, there's still that, that aspect that we need to know, um, you know, what is it that we're negotiating and, uh, and everything. And, and I did have pause at the meeting in relationship to um, the having the number out there. Uh, you know, it's a public meeting, and now you know everybody knows what the number is uh, in regards to what's the monies that uh, potentially are available. And um, you know, I am, I have issues with that. Uh, in particular, when we discuss it, even at council meetings on other items where you know, the numbers are out there, and, and so therefore they're public, and then, you know, the person that you're dealing with in the contract understands exactly what they, you know, they have available to them, rather than, you know, uh, you know, negotiating or having our staffs negotiate, uh, you know, uh, without them understanding that, you know, uh, they can scrap for every dime that they can get. My point, though, is is that um, uh, I just thought we got ahead of ourselves here, and um, uh, particularly the other night. But uh, you know, it would be nice to be able to kind of come together at this next meeting and then put that all together so that we all understand together, um, you know, where we're at. And that's where I feel a little bit lost in where we're at. Okay. May I offer some comments? So. Just a recap of the history from my perspective. We had a closed session on this specifically, and the intent, the direction was to get global financial guidance that would be adequate so that staff could resolve 
the change orders and the claims. And we went through, as <clears throat> you might recall, that was an exhaustive discussion of the claims and we got specific direction from council. The amendment that was brought forward is, needs to be brought forward because the agreement requires that if the change orders are going to exceed the contingency amount, the agreement has to be amended, right? That doesn't say what the, uh, the amount of the amendment has to be, but the amount of the amendment is a figure that is reflective in staff's judgment, including Corollo's, of what's going to be required to settle claims, hopefully, and um, change orders. So we've already had that conversation. Now it's a dynamic situation because it's negotiation per David's point regarding the interplay of the claims and the change orders. But we had a very specific conversation about what the outstanding issues are. We got direction from council and the amendment is reflective of that conversation. Now I as staff understood, so we've gone through that process here and I understand that we have veiled some of the uh, specific information from and protect it in closed session because it's a negotiation and that's appropriate for closed session. It's my understanding that the Hercules City Council um, was in the same position and been uh, appraised um, of the, the situation the same way that the, the Panol Council had been. So I don't have any, uh, again, that's, what, that's my understanding. If that's not correct, then that's not correct. I can't speak to that. But my understanding, and when we spoke to that on Tuesday at our meeting, that was our understanding and continues to be our understanding. So there are some, I believe, some conflicting claims about the level of information uh, that's been provided to the Hercules Council. I, I have no way to adjudicate that. So again, what we were told was the Hercules Council um, had the information that they needed to proceed to consider this item in open session in the same way that the, the Pinole Council did. Okay, let me do this. We. we we need for the staff people to get together and um, make sure that everybody's apprised of exactly where we're at uh, with both communities. Um, I still think that we need another meeting of this body prior to the April meeting. Uh, schedule out on a Thursday next week or the week after. I don't care whenever everything's gotten together. I want Mike from Carrillo to be here. We're giving them another $250,000 to take care of all this. And if we're paying him for that, I'm not going to have the excuse that he can't make it because he's got to be someplace else. This is primary with us. And if he can't be here, then there better be somebody else who speaks for Carrillo that's here to answer questions. I'm not saying that we're going to go through all this. We may not. Point in fact is that those people should be here. We hire them to monitor this project and they're responsible back to us as a unit. And I know they're working closely with our staff people, but that doesn't get us our questions answered. And uh, I want all of our questions answered, simple as that. And I'm sorry that I did not recall that long discussion that we had <laughs> in a closed session, but we have a lot of discussions in closed sessions. And I'm not, that, that's my fault for not understanding that we did have that discussion. I don't know what Hercules done, that's why I was in position, that the, the two communities' staffs get together and uh, you heard what the concern is here, so you have direction on what we need. Well, if I can just clarify, you know, we had a closed session discussion on this uh, a while ago, and that was more in relationship to the PG&E claim and yeah, bankruptcy. But I don't know where your staff had the impression, but our first opportunity to discuss it with the council in closed session with detailed information where Mike Warner can attend is this Tuesday. So so that that whatever well, that statement was at your council meeting was not Thursday, correct. If you so. want to hold it off for but two no, weeks. I'm just saying that, that however it happened, that, that wasn't correct, that our staff, council was fully informed. We haven't had an opportunity to do the closed session discussion. That's this Tuesday. So, all right, so... That was, you know, I mean, the staffs have been fully informed and kept up to date. And what we've told your staff is, you know, we're comfortable with the solution and the recommendation, but we have to go to our council in closed session, and then we have it on the same agenda for open session discussion. But the details as far as how the claims and change orders interact have not been shared to the same level as the Penalt Council, because that's only appropriate for a closed session discussion. So, so that, if I may, that, that begs to my point is that we need to get back in sync. Yep, I understand. I thought we were, but, you know, I, in the heat of a moment, you know, where something you know, was no, perhaps not e exactly portrayed. But your, your staffs do work regularly on it together very closely. And, you know, yeah. 
uh, since we're not the prime contractor, we don't have the same ability to go into closed session as you do on it, so we had to work through that issue as well. So, Cer Certainly, uh, it's a very painful conversation to hear down to this end. I think message received, at least from the two uh, staff, and uh, if uh, we've been uh, causes, we certainly apologize, but we'll get together as quickly as possible and try to write this thing and bring it forward. Well, and just to try to soften it just a little bit, as soon as you went over the contingency, uh, that's when everyone starts to look at things a little more closely. Uh, had it been within a contingency, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We've gone over that because of the change orders. I'm sure that a good percentage of them are warranted. Uh, the amounts are being discussed. I know that, and we know that. Um, it's just that now we're going to be spending more money. And when that happens, uh, that is an alert to everyone. So we've got to be tread, tread a little differently once you get past that contingency. And now we've added 3% to the contingency. It could be that that may not be the end of it. It could be. Um, okay, so so do, how do we want to schedule, and when do we want to schedule the next meeting? Um, first, we want to find out what, what do you want to discuss at the next meeting? You want to discuss change orders? Change orders, if there's anything left that we can talk about. If it's a, a, well, we can do a change small order. amount, then why have the meeting? Okay, because you know, uh, when we have the meetings, we, we have uh, your city manager, our city manager, public works managers blocked off for two hours. So it, once we have our, our closed session, I think we'll know a little bit more. And then we can communicate back. All right. And and but if it seems like the change orders are a finite amount, well then I don't I don't want to bring in city managers and public works managers. All right. For a then you want to then at that point we won't schedule a meeting until there you feel that there's a need to, and we can have our staffs discuss that. And then we do have a meeting coming up in April. Is that correct? And that's when next scheduled meeting is not till June. I think we've gone to a quarterly schedule, so it would have to be a, a special meeting. Yeah. yeah. But I do think that's a good approach is that, you know, uh, and I think with our two, I can rely on our two subcommittee members, if out of the closed session, you know, there's, a, I think there's a thought that our two members would still like to have just an update on change orders generally, then I'll reach out to Andrew and Tamara and we, we'll see if we can't schedule in relatively short order another subcommittee meeting. But I, I do think that that will allow for some clarity, right? Because I th that will give, in that session, we are going to be getting an update on uh, totality of change orders, which ones have been approved, which ones have been pending. And again, my understanding is it's only been relatively recently that change orders have taken us up to where we would exceed the 7%. So there are change orders that aren't being processed and paid because we, we can't do that. So, but again, we've been trying to marry everything together, which we understood there was a consensus for this to be a global strategy to resolve it, to minimize costs like with Corolo. As our experience as staff, and I'm sure you as council members, you get to that point, there's a little bit of give and take and, and trade off. So that has complicated our what might have been our past practice just because it, it has sort of fallen now into that idea of a global settlement, which I would believe, and I understand the concerns, but I think it's in the best interest of our citizens and taxpayers that we if we can do it that way and save money overall, then there is some benefit to perhaps um, being strategic about how we share information and when. It's always a tough, we, we deal with that with other issues as well, you know, and I understand we get questions from constituents, but, you know, sometimes, you know, this process will, is a little bit close to the chest, could result in, in hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings, you know, but that, but, you know, we have to make sure we bring the council members along with that, hence the closed session opportunity. So, Mr. Chair, so just to finish up, so March of last year, we were sitting at 841,000 change orders. And we showed on there that we had projected at 7%, $3 million. September 2019, we show now change orders to date, okay, for the project, $1.844 million. So my question is, if you add 1.2 million back onto that, we're slightly over the 7%. So that is what I want to know, okay? Looking at the numbers here is in September, we're 1.8 million, 1.845 million. 
we adopt a resolution, increase it another three million. And but the numbers here that we have back dated back to September of last year are not reflective. So you want an updated list? <laughs> well, I, I think the bottom line. Numbers? I think we all. I, I mean, giving you those numbers right now. Those numbers I, I don't just, mean anything right now. Well, I just want to know oh. of. <laughs> As of September, where were we at with the change orders? Mm -hmm. And then where are we at through March? Okay. And that's what I'd like to know. That's okay. So, request. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everything's correct, but when you start looking at the numbers, because all right, let's, as let's, we all learned, the numbers are the answers. Let, so. Dan, let's, let, let's do this. Let, let's let staff go back and, and put together right. an updated number. Uh, and then if... Uh, that can be, um, if we need to meet between now and June, we can do that to try to make sure that everybody's on board. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, now through April, Mr. Chair. Very bad timing here, but I'd still like to bring the plaque back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, then we, we'll at least we're going to have that meeting. Yes, so April would, would make sense. All right, April makes sense. Then the other yes. thing on the agenda should be, and there should be an open item there then for discussion of an, an updated report from mm -hmm. Carrillo. An updated report. And then I want complete numbers, bottom line, as to what our cost is going to be. Uh, did we put enough in there with the 3% we added, or are we still going to have to add more? We may have to add, obviously, because of the claims. We don't know where the claims are going to end up, and we're not going to know that because that answer is not going to be here. The change orders, maybe, but some of those relate to change orders, and some of those change orders are still going to be outstanding even past that date because they relate to the claims. So when you have that, now, now, now you've got smoke and mirrors. You've got, you've got a, a big gray area in there that you don't know what the final number is going to be. And we're not going to know that, and they're not going to know that. Mr. Chair, so prior, when we first started this, staff it mentioned that you, possibly you would be looking at notice of completion accepted by the city of Pinole in April. Well, we had that back in 2019 sometime, but, too. But again, <laughs> but, <laughs> I would just request that this, this group Meet meets before the notice prior of completion. To, there we go. Okay. Now, is that, if that, is if that, that acceptable? gets postponed, then understood. But if you guys are having notice of completion, then I think this group should meet prior to that so we understand if everything's Does been accepted. Notice of completion require all outstanding balances are, are, are agreed to and paid? According to the public contract code, which requires the notice of a completion um, be filed in a timely fashion, that notice includes um, agreed upon compensation, only agreed upon compensation. So we need to file that stop notice, or I mean, I'm sorry, that um, notice of completion theoretically in a perfect contracting world within 30 days of the end of the job. Um, the purpose of the notice of completion is really to set forth to all subcontractors and all suppliers to that project that the city of Pinole is closing out its contract. That's the purpose of that. So it will have all of the agreed upon change orders in it. It will not have the claims in it. But it then starts a sharp clock for Kiwit to work out claims or go to court. So all of this conversation about scheduling and timing has been very difficult for you know uh, uh, the contracting agency because the behavior pattern of a contractor during this process gets a little hard so um, I, I appreciate David mentioning surprised. that we've only known the value of some of these change orders late because the contractors have been withholding data um, so we do need to start the shot clock well that's fine and I have no problem with that but remember when that notice of completion is filed the clock starts on when the subs can file liens, and they only have a certain amount of time to file those liens when they haven't been paid. So that being the case, uh, is it 12 months on the liens? Uh, no, it's 30 days. 30 days to file a lien after notice of completion? Correct. Wow, I thought it was longer than that. Okay. So then when that happens, when we file a completion and the sub says, hey, wait a minute, I haven't been paid yet, I better file a lien to protect myself. Then I would suggest that this this group meets April second. You think that's within you, the you realm? You meet on of the seventh to pass the notice of completion. We should be meeting on April second. Because when you file notice of completion, you have all those change orders sitting out there. Most of those change orders involve subs. In fact, I'd say 90 percent of them involve the subs because they're all subcontractors' work. 
And if those people haven't been paid for their, their change order work, which they have not been because I know the general contractors, I've worked with them for years, they're not going to pay their sub until they get paid and not going to give the sub any more money than they have to. So they'll give him uh, whatever the settlement is. So he's not going to get that till after notice of completion if those change orders are still out there and those claims are still out there. So again, you've, you've, you're, you're, we're probably, if we don't, if we got 20 change orders out there, we'll probably have 20 liens filed. <laughs> By the subs. Um, um, it's my understanding that we're recommending April 2nd for the next meeting of the Wastewater Subcommittee. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yes, we can okay, Stop then, without any further discussion, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjourn the meeting and we'll see you. Okay. <clears throat> so, Roland. Coastal cleanups on the 26th of September.